In this video, we'll be creating our admin configuration page. This page will store our um, API details. So that would be the API endpoint as well as our API key. Um, so let's start off by creating a new route within our routing.yaml file. And we'll call this movie directory dot uh, API config page. Config page. Um, again, we set the path. The path ideally it should begin with slash admin slash config because it's an admin page it is a config page and then we can then give it anything we want so i give it something simple like movie api um, next up we want to set our default and defaults rather sorry defaults will be form see you know, so we're creating a form page and this is where we actually set the class for our form so this would be Drupal movie directory, which is our module machine name slash form slash movie, whoops, movie API. <clears throat> Sorry, there we go. And now in our movie directory, we movie directory directory, we go to source and notice that we do not actually have form yet. So create that directory now. So new directory form. And then in form, we're going to create this movie API. We're going to create our new class. So a new file dot PHP. Cool. So now in our movie API file, what we're going to do is again, in it, whoops, initiate PHP, um, set the namespace so that Drupal picks this up in the correct place. Movie directory form um, let's give it a cl oops, class movie a ideally your class name should match your file name movie API and it extends form not from form base here we go and if you are using PHP storm and the auto complete does come up I recommend using it because it then completes the um, use case for you as well so as you see, PHP Storm has given us a couple of errors. So we need to add a few methods. So if I click add, we need to add a get form ID, the submit form ID and the build form. Um, let's just click add for now. And then I'll explain to you what each one does. So the get form ID, any form on Drupal will always have a form ID. So this could be anything you want it to be, but obviously make it something quite relevant to what it is. So for example, I'm going to give this a form ID of movie a oops, API um, config page, right? Um, next, this is our build form. So this is the actual form that we see on the on the URL that we created here. So let's go to uh, no, no, it's not go to let's initiate form equals array. And then let's create form. We want to create a text field which actually stores the URL of our API. So I'd call it API base URL equals so the type to be text field. Let me see if I can make this a bit bigger for you guys. I hope that's a bit clearer now. Oh, that's quite big actually. But yeah, text field. Next, we're going to give it a title. Um, let's call it API base URL. Um, you'll notice I've actually used this. Um, T, this is actually a translation method, which in case you start to add more languages to your site, you can easily translate this. Without it, um, this would be left out with, when it comes to translations of sites. Um, next, we're going to give it a description. Again, it's always good to add descriptions, especially if this is a client site. Um, this would allow them to understand what on earth they actually, um, what they are filling in. This is the API base URL. Now we're going to set it to be required. Oops. True. And we want to set its default value as well. <clears throat> 
so there is something I actually haven't done yet so we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this in a second so next now that we have our API um, URL field we ne also need to have our API key field as well so form API key and again it's quite similar to the field above so type oops type text field title we're gonna call this um, API key and I'm actually going to be a bit more specific version 3 off sometimes it's good to do this just so you understand or remind us of what key you're using because sometimes API tend, tend to change and when they do the type of key that is used also changes as well so for now we're going to be using version 3 um, so now again let's give it a description um, I'd call oops forgot the T there let's call it this is the API key that will be used to access the API I guess and again we are going to set this required to be in true so we cannot save this page unless we have this value and again default default value I'm going to leave that empty for now. So we also have to fill in our submit form for now, but I think we should be good to actually clear our caches and try to access this site. I mean, sorry, this site, this page. So Drush CR, um, you can ignore this. This is something that's personal to my machine. And if we open up Chrome and then go to that URL, which I have forgotten already, choose admin, config movie API let's get rid of that you're not authorized to access this page now okay so now this is most likely because I have forgot to pass it some permissions there we go yeah so we need to add a few more things here um, okay let's give it a title title would be movie API let's call it settings oops and then from here we're going to add requirements so similar to what we have here our permissions we're going to have something very similar here as well so requirements um, permission we can set this to be access content for now because it's something very very basic and also at the same time we could also set it to be in um, I think roles as well and here you can actually say, let's say administrator, and then you do a plus sign for another role, so another role name, and so on. But for now, we're just gonna stick with our generic permission. So let's try and click caches one more time. Sweet, if we go back to our browser and refresh our page, hopefully we should see at least two fields on this page. nope we're not and I think I know why I have forgotten to actually return the form so return form and let's come back there we go sweet we also need a submit button so at least now we can see the two fields are appearing so let's go back to our page restore I'm going to shrink this just a little bit and let's start and in our button so form action so majority of the time if not all the time um, all submit buttons for some reason are in actions I to be honest I'm not sure why um, I've kind of just picked it up and then you kind of went with the flow I'm sure you could actually leave it without actions but I think I feel a bit more safer doing it like this so type um, it's actions and then form actions oops submit so this is going to be our, our new submit button so type 
is submit, similar to what we have here, type is text field, type is text field, type is submit. We could have, we have a variety of different types we can create here. But for now, submit is fine. Um, value, we are gonna call this, let's just call it our save button. And then button type, um, leave it as primary for now. <clears throat> So now if we save this, if you're using PHP Storm, this should be saving automatically. Um, let's go back to our page, refresh. We should see a button appear. I'm not sure why my machine is slowed today. Okay. So if I try and click save, good. So remember these fields are required, so we can't actually do anything. Um, so now that we have our data, sorry, our data. Now that we have our form, we need to actually store our data. So right now, if we were to save, let's use this URL and let's use a key one, two, three, click on save, you'll see everything vanishes. So we need to actually store this data. So back to code, we are actually gonna collect every submitted value. So submitted values, this will be within our form state and our form state has a method which actually cleans the values so for some reason sometimes we get other values that we do not need so we want to clean them first and then we want to get the values that we do need get values so this will only give us this value and this value so now that we've got the values what we want to do is actually set it to be in something um, so we're going to use what we call state in Drupal. So Drupal, oops, like that. Drupal state. I'm going to set it and this would be the key. And then the second parameter would be the value. So submitted values. Um, anytime I create forms, one thing I like to do is to create a constant. That way I can access this very constant in other classes, other hooks, and so on. Um, so what we're going to call this is movie API config page. And the string for that would be movie API config page values. Again, this is a, a personal choice. You don't actually have to do this. You could literally write anything you want here. So literally anything and save it like that. But I prefer to use constants because then I can then use this to, um, I can then access these values within something else. Um, so now we are saving our submitted values with this key. Um, now that we've saved our values, let's just show the user a very nice message. So messenger, Drupal, again, service, I'm going to call messenger, and messenger is add message, oops, again, translation string, your new configuration has been saved. Cool, so now let's try this out. Oh, again, this won't work because although we are saving it, sorry, it will work. We are now saving our data, but it will not appear here. So again, let me just show you what I mean by that. So Ben, uh, let's just go, Ben, save. Again, we're not seeing um, the values that we entered earlier, but we are seeing our new um, saved message. The reason why we're not seeing anything is because our default values are still empty. So now we actually need to get the values that we saved here earlier on. So to do that, we create a new value, a new variable, sorry, called values. And that's going to equal Drupal. Again, we're using states this time instead of setting, sorry, states instead of setting, we are going to get and again, if you notice, you see it's asking for the key, which is the string, um, which is a string, sorry. But instead of passing a string, I'm going to pass it the constant we created earlier. So that's self, self, movie, API config page, and done.
So next, what we do now is we get values and the value the, to be able to determine what the actual key is within our values array is it will always match this machine name we give it here. So I'm going to copy that API base URL and place that in values. Again, very similar to um, this one here. So again, values. And yep, you guessed right, it will be API key. So if we go back to our browser and refresh, we should actually see our new values appearing. Perfect. So now let's change this. Let's remove the bend at the end of each value here. Click save. Sweet. So now we have a new config page and this config page is storing our data. Now we actually do need to sign up to um, the moviedatabase.org. As you can see, I already have an account. Um, so I recommend signing up. Once you sign up, click on your avatar then click on settings. Then from settings, you should scroll down, you should see API. And from the API, you can then get your auth key. So I'm going to copy this and save it to actual, our new config page here. And the API base URL is this. So whoop, no, we don't need a three at the end, but for now, I'll leave it like that. We might, we might not, I'm not sure, but let's save for now. And that's it. So again, reminder, after we create our config page, make sure you go to the moviedb.org, create an account. Once you created your account, click on your avatar, click on settings, then click on API, and this is where you get your information that you need.